Aloha. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Paul Fletcher, and this is The Healing Source. This podcast has truly been a wonderful series. I'm receiving some wonderful feedback on this series, which is on the five elements of traditional Chinese medicine. For those of you that are not as familiar with traditional Chinese medicine, then this is a snippet. Since that technology is several thousand years old and the average traditional Chinese medicine doctor goes through four or more years of education, it's hard to cover any level of depth in that in this simple podcast. And I am not educated as a traditional Chinese medicine doctor. I am, however, trained to understand what I'm sharing with you. <clears throat> as a Tao healer, I have been training with Dr. and Master Jigong Sha for about 15 years now. And he is a trained traditional Chinese medicine doctor as well as a Western medicine doctor. And today I'll be sharing with you aspects of the earth element. So the five elements, which I'll show a picture for you in just a moment, is a concept that is far greater than just the physical body, although that's what we'll be applying it for today. The five elements include wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. And as has been shared before in the two previous episodes where I covered the wood element and the fire element, each of these elements work in harmony. They can be, uh, they can be, I'm going to share a screen here. As you can see by this image, they are wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. And those listening on podcast, I'll try to describe what I'm showing. <clears throat> and you see the arrows connecting the wood to the fire, the fire to the earth, and so forth. We touched on this last week, and we spoke about the nurturing or nourishing aspect, where the wood nourishes the fire. And the fire then breaks things down and nourishes the earth. The earth then nourishes or forms the metal, and metal then is the transporter of water and so forth. And then water feeds and nourishes the wood. We talked on this last week. There's also controlling mechanisms. Okay, so you can control the amount of the fire by how much wood you put in, less fire, less wood, and so forth. And so if there's insufficient amount of each of these elements affecting the other one uh, in the of that element and the associated organs and systems can be either positively or negatively empowered. And there's what's called the over-controlling aspects of these elements. So when you look at this chart, you can see that <clears throat> uh, fire and water are opposite. And you see that metal and wood are opposite. So like metal can cut wood, water can put out fire. Okay. And wood can control earth and so forth. Earth can control water. And so uh, it's really interesting when you take this deeper, many thousand year old concept and you apply it this way. And this is not, again, limited to the human body. It also is in every cell, uh, in every planet, star and galaxy and universe, according to the higher wisdoms. Now, specifically to what we're talking about today, the earth element, we're going to be sharing with you wisdom about this element and the five uh, aspects that it is connected to with the human body. Now, there's actually about 15 or so aspects, but specifically we're going to be talking about five of them. And they are the spleen organ, the stomach organ, the tissue, the body tissue, is the mouth and the gums. 
there is an imbalanced emotion connected with it called worry. And the other aspect is the muscles, muscles. Now, when I first heard about the earth element many years ago, I was fascinated because I had, you know, I didn't understand that there was any correlation, you know, earth is earth, mother earth, da, 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 da. But this is entirely unique and separate. Who would have thought the earth element has a connection to spleen, stomach, and more importantly, it is the governor of our digestion. Isn't that interesting? Digestion and digestion-related issues are quite predominant in humanity today. You know, you could line up uh, 100 people and at least 50% of them will tell you they have some kind of a digestive issue. That's how predominant it is today. <clears throat> and so this, according to traditional Chinese medicine, would indicate some specific imbalances in either the spleen or the stomach. But it also looks farther than that. It takes into consideration that there might be other factors that are contributing to imbalances in the digestion. And I gave an example last week uh, when I was speaking about the metal element, which, by the way, we're going to talk about more next week. So let's work with an example. Now, it has already been shared that the imbalanced emotion connected with the earth element is the emotion of worry. Another uh, uh, TCM doctor said it would be described as, let me see the words that he uses here. Give me a moment. You never find it when you want to. <laughs> he used a very, oh, overthinking, rumination. These are the words he used. Uh, the, the short version is worry. But he would say overthinking, rumination. And so are you an overthinker? Do you ponder? Do you, do you keep yourself up at night? Right? Do you have trouble sleeping because your brain's busy, busy, busy? Worry, worry, worry. Ruminating on things over and over. Okay. Are you one of those that takes a subject from the past? Oh, I could have said this differently. I should have done that differently. And then you beat yourself up, right? So this kind of a energy could absolutely contribute to weak digestion. This is the way traditional Chinese medicine would look at this. And so it's really important to recognize also uh, for example, there's a, a Western medicine diagnosis called fibromyalgia. Now, according to Western medicine, they don't really know what causes it, and they certainly do not have a cure. Um, and <clears throat> it has been identified approximately 95% of those with this are female, 5% are men. And I find that personally extremely interesting. Um, why would it occur mostly for the women and not so much for the men? That's something curious. And I honestly do not know how traditional Chinese medicine would approach this particular um, label, this particular health condition. But I do know that in earth element, muscles is one of the major functions of that element. And I do know that worry tends to be relatively predominant and the female species. Of course, men, we have our worry as well. But generally speaking, uh, women are, are more connected to their heart and accordingly more connected to emotions. Men are more disconnected from their heart. It's a very general statement and accordingly not so emotional. So those that are more connected, therefore more emotional or possibly more worry, that could possibly be a facet that is contributing to an earth element imbalance. That same person that may be displaying fibromyalgia, do they have digestion issues? Do they have uh, acid reflux? Do they have uh, uh, sore muscles or fibromyalgia, right? Uh, these are, are connections that you want to take a look at. Now, a very unique thing happened uh, many years back. I have several electronic devices for healing. And one of them is called a tenant 
biomodulator. And this biomodulator was, was uh, not invented by the man named Dr. Tennant, but he, uh, he found it uh, about, that had been about, been about 40 years earlier. It was actually invented for the cosmonauts by Russian scientists. Because when they sent people in the, up in the spaceships, they didn't want to send a pharmaceutical lab with them in case any of them got sick. So they invented a little electro, electrical device that basically uh, you put it on your energy meridian and it measures. Uh, you put it on the heart meridian, it'll measure high, low, or balanced. You put it on the spleen meridian, it'll measure high, low, balanced. And then if it was out of balance, it would put in frequency into your meridian, electrically speaking, just put a pad on your arm, and it would balance your electrical meridian, which would then balance your organ. So this was what the Russians invented many years ago. <clears throat> the reason why this doctor took that product and reinvented it was because of a health issue he had which is specifically related to the spleen. Spleen is part of the earth element. So what happened was he, one, in just one day, just got sicker and sicker and sicker and basically became bedridden and he couldn't figure it out. He had every test under the sun done with Western medicine. He had every MRI, XRI, you name it. He had them all looked at and nobody could figure out anything. He then uh, said, okay, well, let's go outside of mainstream medicine, which he had never done in his life because he was Western trained doctor. And he started checking the traditional Chinese medicine and all these other different things. And he was uh, with the traditional Chinese medicine doctor. And he asked him, he said, I'm showing that your spleen meridian is very weak right now. And let me ask you, I mean, have you ever had any damage to your spleen? No. He said, okay. Uh, have you had any root canals about the same time as this uh, issue occurred? Now, this issue was a six-year issue before he resolved it. Can you imagine being, being basically taken out of your job and not be able to do anything for six years? That's how long this issue was. It took him that long to find the solution. And he said, did you have any um, root canals um, around the time this, this you know, illness happened for you? And he had to go back and check his records. And sure enough, he did. He then, the, the TCM doctor said, you have a spleen meridian, earth meridian, spleen meridian, that runs through your jaw lines. And it could be that that spleen meridian is being negatively impacted by the root canal. And underneath the root canal, there could be disease. So the doctor went to the dentist he had the root canal removed. He had it cleaned out. And within two weeks, he was back to normal health. So this is the nature of understanding the interconnectivity of our body, the spleen and its effect on our health, and the nature of the earth element and its interconnectivity to our wellness. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little practice to help bring some balance to the earth element and the digestion. And then we're going to do it with, with some acupressure, and we're going to do it with uh, some Tao healing. So first, I'm going to show you an image of what you can do with acupressure. Now, this here is a chart that will help you to bring strength to your, uh, you see here, this hand, to your spleen and stomach. Spleen and stomach is your governor's the yin and yang respectively spleen is the yin organ the stomach is the yang organ and so by uh, working with these two acupuncture points we can create benefit to ourselves now one of the things that i, I learned about this actually 15 probably 20 years ago with a different uh, spiritual teacher and this one i'm going to show you just four four fingers below the knees um, he pointed to us at that and he said, the ancient wisdom is when you tap this a hundred times a day, you will never get sick. That was the ancient wisdom. So let me put that picture back up again. And so you can see here that what you do is you put your four fingers side by side, just like you see in the image, and you, you rest it below your kneecap. And so wherever that is below your kneecap, and then on the outside of the bone is where that point is, on the outside of the bone, okay? So that's where you would poke your finger, 
right? Take a strong finger and then rub it, okay? Now, this uh, description here, it says you push for 15 seconds, take a nice long deep breath, And when you exhale, continue to push another few seconds. And then release. For those on podcast, you simply put your four fingers side by side together. You, you uh, place it underneath your kneecap and at your pinky, just below your pinky on the outside of your leg uh, is this point. Now, when you push on it, it will, could be a little bit tender. Okay, It's right next to the bone. I've, I've known about this spot for 20 years now. I've been pushed on it and rub it. Sometimes I'll sit there and thump on it with my fists. So do that. And uh, I'll, sometimes I'll just sit there and rub it and poke it and rub it. And this, this particular graphic says to push, hold 15 seconds, and then release for five. And do that several times. A previous teacher would say, thump on this uh, 100 times. Um, there's different ways you can do this. But... This invigorates your stomach and stomach meridian. This particular spot is for stomach and stomach meridian. Okay, so that's a very, very good practice for you. Now, the, the other practice is called the San Yin Jiao. And how you do this is you use those same four fingers and you place them to where you go to your ankle. And so your pinky touches your ankle and then uh, where the bone is on the, is it an inside? Let me read it here. Above the ankle, behind the tibia. This is the crossing of the spleen, kidney, and liver meridians. Sounds like a very good place. This is on the inside. Okay. So your, your, uh, your foot, you place your hand, your, your pinky basically where your ankle is. Four fingers are flat, right where your um, index finger is, and then just push right where that bone is, right next to the bone where the soft spot is. That's where you would push on that spot. Again, 15 seconds. We're invigorating the spleen, the kidney, and the liver meridian, nourishing your blood and your yin, cooling and invigorating the blood. There's a key note here. Do not press this spot if you are pregnant. Okay. So pay attention to those on podcast. If you're pregnant, do not press this spot. And so these are two spots, both easy to find using your four fingers, one just above the ankle, one just below the knee. And you would do that on both sides <coughs> of your body. So there's many different things that we can do when we have a little bit of understanding of traditional Chinese medicine. I want to pause for a moment and say hello to Charlene, Pranjal, Rebecca, everybody who was, uh, who has been saying hi and showing up on these live streams. Thank you for your presence. Charlene says, gee, that spot by the ankle was sore. Yeah. There are some very fun spots, but I don't have time to put my foot up in the camera and show you where they are on the feet. <laughs> but I typically give myself a foot massage when I can every day. I will sit, literally sit down and poke my feet, push, prod, and work around my ankles. And I find my body really appreciates that. I've been remiss the last few days, so speaking out loud, I will remind myself to do that more often. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work with some Tao healing practices to bring healing and rejuvenation to these five elements. Mm -hmm. So as a reminder, for the earth element, the five aspects are the spleen, which is the yin organ, the stomach, which is the pear yang organ. There is the teeth and gums, excuse me, the mouth and gums, which remember that story I just shared with you. Mouth and gums connected to the spleen. This person had a root canal infecting the mouth and gums. And it was creating a, a huge amount of havoc for his body to deal with. So very interesting connection there. Do you think they would have found that in Western medicine? Apparently not. It took the man six years of research before he figured it out. 
and then he 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 researched that electric machine and created it to help people balance their meridians. Um, the other aspects include worry, which we talked about worry and muscle pain, right? And the possible interconnectivity to fibromyalgia and or other muscle related pains. Well, I think it's very relevant and important to keep these, these aspects in mind. Other functions of the earth element or ways of measuring balance or imbalance is dampness, right? So oftentimes people may have very damp energy and that can show up in the form of fatigue and other ways. <clears throat> so uh, Master Shah has brought different ways where we can bring healing to these organ systems that we just talked about. But there's one way to bring balance to the entirety of the earth element, which is not limited to those five things just mentioned. Remember, the earth element is in every cell. It's in every organ, every system. It's in every star, planet, galaxy, and universe. It's not, it's not what we know as earth. It is a, a ideology that is representative of one of five things to bring balance to us in, in its entirety. And so the, uh, the sound power, who, H-U, is often used to balance the uh, imbalanced frequency and vibration of the earth element as it may reside in our cells, organs, and systems. So if there may be certain cells, organs, and systems that have a, a balance of the earth element, and when someone chants who, it will just assist them to remain in alignment. But any cells, organ systems that are out of balance with the earth element, when we chant who, it starts bringing that alignment and frequency. Now, one very special thing about Dr. and Master Shah is he wants to bring the highest healing and healing abilities that he can to humanity. And so for about 15 years now, he has been doing Tao calligraphy transformative art in which he, uh, he uses a symbol to represent the healing. He's probably written many thousands of calligraphies at this point, <clears throat> but specific to the five elements, he uses the sounds. So I'm going to place this image up on the screen for you so that you can uh, trace this source calligraphy with me. <clears throat> for those on podcast, I will trace on your behalf. You will simply chant the sound power who along with me. Now, there is what's called the four power technique, which is employed in all Tao healing. And basically, it's body power. In this case, how do we trace the calligraphy? We touch all five fingers together. Each finger is connected to an element. The earth element is actually your thumb. And so by touching all five fingers together, we are balancing the five elements. And then we would trace the calligraphy. That's called the body power. The sound power, power number two, is the sound of who. We're going to chant that. The visualization or mind powers, we're going to visualize and see light coming through this, this portal, this source calligraphy that acts as a portal through which frequency and vibration will come to you. And in this case, we're going to visualize it coming to our spleen, which is under uh, our left rib cage next to our stomach. And then for the soul power, we're going to connect to this calligraphy. And we would say, dear, this calligraphy and all the healing frequency and vibration within. We're so grateful for this opportunity to receive your healing, your frequency, your vibration to balance my earth element, including my spleen, stomach, uh, imbalanced emotion of worry, muscles, and mouth and gums. <clears throat> Could you please bring balance to these areas? I'm so grateful. Thank you. That would be called uh, soul power. And the last two powers are breathing power and calligraphy power. You already see the calligraphy. Uh, and the breathing power is natural breathing for this practice. So let us begin by touching all five fingers together. Again, for those on podcast, see light, close your eyes, see light coming into your spleen, and chant who. Deep breath in. Who.
Now chant who, who, who in one breath. Deep breath in. Who. As we complete this tracing, one of the most important keys is to offer gratitude. Even though this is only a few minutes of tracing and chanting, it starts to smooth out the negative messages, energy, frequency, and vibration that is within the aspects of the earth element. Your digestion can become much better. One well, simple practice that you can do is prior to eating or after eating you can simply connect not even remembering this video just remember the sound power of who now don't worry about the spelling uh, in english we would say who are you well the spelling for the earth element is different but if you can simply remember who like who are you you chant that a few minutes before you eat or a few minutes after you eat and you ask did the sound power of this who mantra for balancing my earth element and my digestion could you please bless my digestion process i'm so grateful that's called soul communication it's a Tao healing technique and then you simply place your hand over your uh, spleen and stomach and you would chant the sound power who three, four, five minutes. You could be quite surprised at the benefits that this could bring to you. Something this simple. You will discover that all the Tao healing techniques are very, very simple. Da Dao Jurgen translates to the big way is extremely simple. So healing does not have to be complicated. There are many different forms and aspects of Tao healing. You can heal by light balls, treasures and transmissions, through sound, through Tao calligraphy. There is Tao song healers, Tao dance healers. <clears throat> There's even Tao hands healers, which is a similar to Reiki, but significantly more powerful. So if you wish to receive any healing, reach out find me my website is wellspringoflight.com and you can also uh, if you're listening to this podcast make sure you like and subscribe i'm on all of the major podcast players out there tell your friends about us i have programs through my wellspring of light website that give you uh, trial memberships where you come in for a whole month and experience that kind of tracing and healing with calligraphy for your particular health issues, opening up your chakras, healing and rejuvenating your organs, balancing your emotions, and so much more. So make sure you go to my website and take advantage of this. I look forward to seeing all of you soon. Until then, have an awesome day. Thank you for coming, everybody. Bye-bye.